Hello shiny crafty people and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Totten and today I want to show you how you can make your own placemats like these that are four or five dollars at the store. These are a couple ones by uh, Pioneer Woman from uh, the Comet Walmart and they're they're about four dollars um, or you can get the obvious those plasticky ones but I'm thinking I might want to make a specific style or design that matches a few other things that I can make. So this is in a series of how we are going to make things out of a store-bought quilt. Isn't that fantastic? This is a $29.95 quilt from Walmart, and it is already pre-quilted. They have several different varieties, of course. I love this one with this interesting pattern, so I'm going to show you how to make this yourself, and you can get dozens of placemats out of it, but also a number of other items that we're going to make in this series, so check it out. All right, to make this, we're gonna need our store-bought quilts. We're gonna need some fabric to bind the edges with. We will need a rotary cutter and a straight edge, or you can use a marker and uh, a pair of scissors for this as well. And I'm also gonna use some cardboard here, and this is to get myself a template. Because most, uh, most of these standard traditional placemat is about, let's see, 19 by about 14. Now, of course, I can make these whatever size that I want, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep them pretty much this size. I'm gonna use the cardboard to cut out a template because I wanna be able to place um, my template on top of the, of the fabric and find the same exact thing every time. And I need like a little viewfinder window. So I'm gonna go to my cardboard here. You could take like a moving box or something. Um, and I'm going to cut out a hole about this size, but I need to leave an area around the outside because I want to be able to um, have like a window to put down. And then I can either draw with a pen on the inside and then chop it off. Um, so I need to give myself a couple of inches. So this is gonna be 19 inches. I want to have at least three on each side. So I'm gonna add six extra inches, which would make it 25. So I need 25 inches. And then since it's 14, if I add three inches on either side, that's gonna be 20. So I'm gonna cut this 20 by 25 and I will use my, my pen to mark that off. Now this is 24 and I need another inch. Perfect. I've marked it at 25 and then I need to go 20 tall. Whichever way it takes you to get this is fine. There's no rhyme or reason to how it has to be done so you can use anything else you need to. And since this has already a straight edge along the side, I'm just going to mark my mark up to that. Should be no problem. Go between the two of these. Now, I just, um, it's a brand new ruler, and I just put <laughs> black marking all across the side of it. All right, so that's going to be what I cut out in just a minute. And then I need to come in three inches, right, where I'm going to put my, draw my thing in the middle. Now, if you don't care, if you, if you buy a quilt that doesn't really have a design in it, then it really wouldn't matter. You could easily just, um, you could just cut these out wherever and actually you wouldn't have to fussy cut them. This is kind of what it's called, fussy cutting, or, um, you know, we're looking for a certain design. So as I mark these three inches around, we just want to make sure that we're not, um, that we draw it in first before we cut it. It would be bad if we cut it and then realize we had cut wrong. So what do they say? Measure uh, twice, cut once. Double checking. All right, so I'm gonna draw in one line here. Choose the part where I've already put my marking on the edge of it. And I don't care that it goes over. I'm not gonna cut down here. I just needed my mark. Now I can come back and mark these on. So perfect. And I'm basically drawing out the window that I'm gonna cut off or cut out, right? So I'm gonna cut this big section in the middle out. Now I'm gonna use this rotary cutter because I this is actually the paper blade on my rotary cutter, so I'm not worried about it. It's meant for this kind of stuff. So I cut that part. Now this one I'm not going to get in one pass. I'm going to have to use more than one pass. Some people ask me where do you get a piece of cardboard this big. 
And I gotta tell you, um, I actually use cardboard like this for other projects, but you could just use an old moving box or you could use a, if you drink a lot of wine, maybe there's a wine box in your life that you could use. Make sure you don't go past those marks. You know, sometimes you can also go to like a, a, the kind of grocery store where they uh, they don't give you bags like an Aldi or a Save-A-Lot and see if they have any big boxes because they're always giving those away to people to carry their groceries home in. All right, I'm almost done cutting that out. And you could save this centerpiece for a different project if you wanted to. I like to recycle. I don't like to throw too many things away. And now we have our window. And that's really important because this particular quilt that I'm using, it has some interesting designs in it. So I'm just gonna take this off. And in fact, I save these too. I save these straps and I do other fun stuff with them. So I don't like to throw anything away if I can. So I'm gonna lay this quilt out. I, um, I actually priced out the cost of, oh, extra piece of the cardboard there. I priced out pre-quilted fabric at the fabric store and it was $20 a yard, which of course you can get a little bit cheaper if you, um, if you have a coupon and you're at one of the popular stores. You know, after a lady's name, you've probably heard of this one before. Okay, so look at these nice designs that are in here. And I think how nice of a, how nice will that look if that's your design for your, for your placemat. So if you place this over, you could see how you could actually get your placemat right out of one of the center of one of those. See, I'm always thinking here. So <laughs> what I would do with this one is I would, I would mark this with my pen. I would choose, okay, I'm gonna make it to where, I'm gonna make it equal distant around and you can kind of look at it and then I'll, and maybe flatten it out if you felt like you needed to really flatten it. And then I'm just gonna come through and mark it. And the odds are these are gonna be in different parts of your house, so, or in, in your, on your table. So um, people are probably not gonna put them that close together to see if they exactly match. Now I got that one, I'm gonna to need to do another one, you know, further down and go around and get them out of it. Now you'll notice that the next color one look, it's too close for us to get it out of there. So you might have decided, well, maybe I wanna make a little bit smaller placemat so you could actually get several placemats out of it. That's up to you. I've decided that I'm just gonna worry about getting a couple of placemats out of this, but for the first one, I'm just gonna do one to show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with my rotary cutter. And I'm just putting it on that line that I drew and cutting it out, going a little past you could, of course, use scissors, by the way. Going a little past the end, each end where the lines cross so that I make sure it cuts out. And I won't lift this up right away until I make sure that all those corners have pulled out. Okay. And I'm not worried about the, the, the seeing the line that I drew because I'm gonna cover that over with binding. All right, look at how nice that looks. Now we know that our binding is gonna to need to be at least the length of what would be the circumference of this if it was a circle, but it's a square, a rectangle, obviously. I need this much, this much, this much, and this much all together. So I know it's 19 and 19, which is 38, and you could easily put this into a calculator if you needed to. Um, so that's 38, and then I need 14 and 14, which is 28, so together, uh, 38 and 20 is 58 plus another eight is 66. So I need at least 66 inches of my binding. Now, if I was making a bunch of these, I would roll out my fabric here about 70 inches and then, um, you know, in that length. And then I would simply have one long piece. I'm going to do a doubled thing here. And, uh, this is interesting fabric because it's on the roll. We, somebody obviously used a piece of this before, and there's a bunch of small pieces that are here, which are perfectly fine. I'm gonna take this particular 
I know, I want to show you what it would look like if you took it off of a bolt. You had bought some fabric off a bolt. So let me just show you. I'm going to come in here and cut binding. Now I have to make a choice. Do I, I got to make, how am I going to bind this? Am I going to just create an encased binding that goes over both sides and you stitch through it, which is probably the easier way to do it. Probably the way I'll do it. If you're trying to make it really pretty, you do it like you bind a quilt and that's a different technique. But so what I want to do is I'm going to cut binding that is, um, that is one inch, uh, two inches wide. And that'll give us a half an inch to flip over and half an inch to flip over. So it gets to be an inch wide and then we fold it in half. It'll be a half inch wide binding all around the entire thing. And I think that'll probably be the best strategy. So what I need to do is cut 60 something inches of this two inches wide. The problem is the, the fabric is only 44 inches wide on the bolt. See, it's doubled on the bolt here. So obviously I need to cut two of them. Now we also have to remember that this is not, we're not trying to do bias binding. That's a whole different project. Bias binding is cut at an angle on the bias so that the fabric can stretch. We're gonna cut it this way and it's not really gonna stretch. That's okay because we're not trying to go around any intricate rounded areas. We're just going around corners. All right, so I'm gonna go put my, put my marker on two inches. So that's two inches here and I'm gonna cut it. And I need to do two of those and then I'll iron them in just a moment to make them prettier. So again, I line up the two inch mark on my ruler. You can do this with a pair of scissors as well. Just mark it with a pen. So now I have these two straps, strips, and then I'm gonna take them over to the iron and I'm going to press them and make them look uh, fantastic to go around the edge. So come with me. So one of the things we need to do before I can actually um, uh, iron this, uh, press it down, is I need to connect these two together so I have the length. And, and you'll notice that on the ends, there are sort of, a, there's a salvage edge that's quite strong, but even this one has a salvage edge, you can't really quite see it as well. So I need to make sure I can sort of cut off those pieces or when I iron them together, I mean, sorry, sew them together, that I just give a long enough seam allowance. So I'm gonna put the two pieces right sides together and then I'm gonna stitch a pretty thick uh, seam allowance there. I'm probably gonna go almost a full inch or you know, maybe three quarters of an inch. And of course, you know, um, I have, uh, I've decided to use some white thread to sort of uh, match the uh, what's been already ironed, uh, to match what's already been sewn on the, the piece. It's sort of got white quilting fabric through there. So in what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm going to trim this extra fabric off to back to about a quarter of an inch, right? Just easier to do it a afterwards rather than trying to do it beforehand and have a small thing. And then now I can iron this full piece. So let's go over to the iron and press it into place. So now that I have my fabric for my binding, and this is what's gonna go all the way around the edge of this of, of this placemat. And, and if you're gonna do several placemats, you should probably make quite a bit of this. So you could do long sections of it. Uh, the first thing I do is just get it pressed. Just come with my iron. Um, I have a little bit of steam and I'm trying not to distort the long shape of it. You have to be careful, even though this is not cut on the bias, it can still be a little stretchy. So I'm not really pulling on the fabric too much. And down here where it's folded over, you might have to flip it over. This fabric is actually one we used to use in our main business, which is called Final Embrace. We make uh, products for funeral homes. And uh, it's a fabric we used to use on some precious little items that we made. So um, now the step is to fold it in half and half and in half. It, it's a hard to describe it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half and come along and iron it and then open it up and iron both sides to that center fold. So I'm just going along. So 
So I'm just sort of folding the edges together. I'm not trying to pull the, the fabric. Again, I'm not trying to make the fabric do something it doesn't want to do. I don't want to stretch it out. That's important to know. Too many people try to fight fabric and it's not useful. Don't fight it. Let me flip it over and show you on that side there. See, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna fold that over and then just come along. Several people have asked me what kind of iron I use. This is actually a sunbeam that I bought at Target of all places. And it was one of the cheapest ones there. I think it was $29.99 when I bought it. So, I mean, it works great. I don't even know if it has a model number or anything, but it's a sunbeam. I love it. I like it because it makes a lot of steam. Like it makes an enormous amount of steam and I'm a huge fan of steam, so. Um, I have always said that, um, and I, I'm gonna be repeating myself, so if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll hear this again, that if you're doing any kind of quilting or precision sewing, and iron is your best friend, it will step up your game. It'll make everything look so much better. Now our job is to come back here to the, the other end that is cool by now, because trust me, this end is still a little warm for we just ironed it. I'm gonna open up the two sides, and then I'm gonna fold into the center. I'm gonna fold into the center like this, and then fold it back shut. I'm basically creating finished edges all down this thing. And you can go further down and then flip over, move your iron along as you go along here. Some people also will set the iron down and then pull the fabric underneath. I've done that before, especially if you're using the technique that I showed in another video um, that, that oh, that's real hot down there. My fingers are starting to, to torch up a little bit. If you're using the, uh, the version that uses a, a safety pin oh, that's, that's cut into the, hooked onto the, the pad, um, this is not enough right now for me to do that, although you can, and there are bias tape makers. Uh, if you have somebody, if you want to just buy some from the store, they make some, or if you know anyone in your life who does 3D printing, it's a great gift to ask somebody who's 3D printing to make for you because it's real easy to make. There are plenty of, of models out there, and the 3D printing model is basically the digital file. I use a website called Thingiverse, thing -iverse. So it's like universe, but it's Thingiverse. And uh, and I've had quite a few things printed. Um, some items for my, for, by uh, by my my mother's uh, husband is um, is a 3D printing guy, and he makes really awesome stuff. And uh, he's made me a couple of really great things. Some puzzle pieces. He's made me um, a great locking mechanism for my charger on my Tesla. Um, yeah, this it's it's fun, and I'm, I'm just going to keep doing this and tell you life stories as we go along. Uh, and it goes pretty fast. This is actually the kind of thing you can do pretty quickly. I um, for the last almost ten years, I've been following the story of the Tesla cars, and um, and I uh, I decided about three years ago that I really wanted a Tesla, and um, and I've had my car, my other car, for so many years now. Uh, bought it, paid cash for it when I bought it, so it tells you it's not a very expensive car. But also it worked out great. Um, I bought this uh, little Ford C-Max hatchback thing and uh, it was fantastic. Um, hybrid, so um, I'm a big fan of efficiency in all kinds of things, which is probably why I'm showing you how to make placemats uh, cheaper out of a <laughs> out of a store-bought quilt. And uh, I'm also showing you how to make it a store-bought quilt because then you can decide what you want it to look like. You know, you can pick a lot of different choices. So about three years ago, I decided I wanted a Tesla Model 3, which is their smallest vehicle. And um, and yeah, I saved and saved and saved and saved. And my 45th birthday came around this year. And I was like, man, I'm old. Uh, and my apologies to any of you who've already hit your 45th birthday and think I'm crazy. But I was like, man, I am old and I'm not waiting all around anymore. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and bought my Tesla Model 3, which I absolutely love. I adore it. It's amazing. If you ever get a chance to get into Tesla and go riding around, it's like it's like driving into the future. I, I keep expecting it to make the Jetsons, uh, the, the Jetsons uh, vehicle sound that, you know, that kind of a sound when I drive it around. And in fact, uh, if uh, if you're watching Elon Musk, maybe you should add that as a feature because it pretty much makes no sound now. And um, I think people would love to hear my car coming as that weird sound. So we're almost done here. 
as you'll see, I am getting close to the end down here. So I'm going to keep on keeping on. Now, I don't need quite this much of it because like I told you, I only need 60-something uh, inches and this is going to be 80-something. But, you know, I would rather have finished binding as I go around. Now, you can also buy bias binding in many different colors. So, in fact, you might want to go to the store and just buy the binding. It's only a couple dollars. You know, it, it was, it's going to do good for you if you decide you want to do it. And um, each one of these, though, for mine, is going to take almost two yards of bias binding. Two yards is 72 inches, and I've told you I need 60-something. So that can get a little expensive. Now you're getting to the territory of maybe you should just bought some, <laughs> bought some of these. Right. There we are. We are now ready to take our binding and our piece over to the sewing machine. So join me. So here we go. I have my placemat and my binding, and I have my machine already threaded with white fabric. And what I am going to do is find a sort of start point on my on my binding and find an area that I'd want to start in. So I kind of like this right in the middle, in fact, because I don't want anybody to think it's, you have to be careful about how far off you're gonna go. I'm gonna mark, mark a point at the middle and that's where I'm gonna start and end. Now I will have another piece of fabric um, further along, the other split somewhere. So um, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's my center point here. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, in fact, there's two ways you could do this. I could find the center of my, my binding strip where I put the two together, which is right here. And I could center that there, but you know what? You can barely see that it's there. I mean, it's, it's really hard to tell that there's a piece there. So I'm just going to start here with my binding and I'm going to leave a little bit empty. I'm going to leave a little bit that I don't, that I don't, um, that I don't stitch down. So I'm going to come along and open up my binding, lay my fabric toward the edge and fold it over. And maybe I turn the pin the other direction. There we go. Now I don't want to st so start at that pin because I need to leave room to hook this piece of fabric to the other one that's coming around. So I'm going to open it all the way up, lay my material inside you could pin this if you needed to. If you felt more comfortable, just pin it around a little bit. And then I'll go, I'm gonna edge stitch, which means that I'm going to not, no, I'm not gonna put the, I'm not gonna get a full quarter inch seam here when I stitch this down. So I'm gonna start, back up a little. I'm using about an eighth inch. I'm going about an eighth inch in from the edge. And then I need to flip it over and make sure it's still grabbing the fabric on the other side, which it's doing. Now we're gonna do something special when we get down to the corner. And I'm gonna show you what that'll look like. When we get down to the corner, I'm gonna stop the width of this uh, fabric away from the edge. So if you have to, if you need to measure that in some way, you could, you could go along and fold to here. See how I folded it to meet, match the edge here? And that'll tell me how far away I need to stop. And if I wanna put a pin in that, pin here would show me that I need to stop about that far away. Let me stitch down to that point. I'll show you again on another, another stitch. And then I am going to, um, I'll just take it the, the fabric out. What I'm going to do is open this binding. See what I'm going to do here? I'm going to open it and flatten it to the edge. One of the ways you can do this even easier would be to open it on the back and flip this edge to, to match right here. Lay it down, see what we're doing? And then fold it back over. So basically we wanna get this fabric going this direction but you really don't want to round it. So what I do is I, I get that folded over and just move it until we get a 45 degree point there. See that 45 degree point coming off from the point here down. And then I can fold the fabric up right at that point. Make sure I get that 45 degree really in there, right in there. Make sure on the other side that it's also 45 degrees, see that? 
45 degrees there as well. Fold it over. Ah, oh, look, and if you need to, just put a pin in there. If you need to put a pin in it, put the pin. So I will do that, I'll pin it so we can take a look at it. I'm gonna pin it in this regard, right here. Ooh, look how nice. So then I go back under the machine, start a little bit off, get into my point, and then I'm gonna turn it, and then I'm gonna take that pin out because it'll all be under the sewing machine now, take the pin out, and just keep stitching all that down. Now you could, if you wanted to, do those, those folds in advance as you get closer to the end and without taking it out of the machine. I'm gonna show you that, sec, that version next. So I'm gonna keep sewing down. And again, just make sure you look at the back and that it's catching your fabric. Now, right now I'm getting a lot closer down to this end and I wanna show you, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can really show you. Before I actually do any sort of turning here, I kind of know that's gonna stay, stay strong. So I'm gonna come in and put a pin just to hold all that together. And then I'm gonna come to my end here and do my opening. I'm gonna open, flatten to that edge, fold my corner over, just like I did the last one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin that as well. Let me get my fabric up there, they're perfect. So I know how much I need. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin down here first. Okay, and then I can come back to this point and really make sure it all sticks in there. Good, nice point. On that corner, I'll put a pin into it just to make sure it stays. If I can hold onto the pins. This is some of the more tedious work, just a little bit tedious to do, but I think it pays off in the end because it's gonna look really sharp. All right, so now I can stitch down to that and I am gonna be careful because I'm not gonna go over my pin, so I'll pull that first pin out come all the way till I come over and I just caught that fabric at the edge where that, that triangular fold was. Come back down, stick myself with the pin that's already stuck in there. <laughs> and now it's been, a, it's been a minute since I've uh, actually done this type of folding and you're gonna see that I have missed it on the back. So I'm gonna come back and touch that up in a minute. And so um, I'm just as out of practice as anybody else might be on this. So we are going to, we're gonna give me a little bit of uh, leeway. I always like to give myself a little bit of permission to make mistakes. I think you should do the same thing. And the good part is, is I can come back with my sewing machine and stitch that down, or I can come back with a, a, just, a, just a needle and thread and stitch that down. So I'm down here at the other end and I wanna show you this from a different angle. I'm going to find the point here at the bottom and here's maybe a different way to do it. I can pin right, uh, right at about that quarter mark that I showed you, about a quarter of an inch or half an inch, somewhere in there. And then I'm gonna fold that fabric right to that point so it's nice and sharp. Go over with the, take that pin out actually, unfortunately. Go over and lay it down. See how that angled point goes in there and now I'm following the line down here. And so for this one, I'll go ahead and put a pin in to hold all that together. Looking good. Then I'm gonna fold this to the back, making sure that I actually leave this flat. I don't want that to pop out, so I wanna leave it flat as I bring that over to the point. All right, that's looking good. I will stitch over to that material. I'm really close to my needle, but I'm not, my pin, but I'm not actually touching it. 
I'm opening up this fabric so I can lay that in there. And now as I give a couple stitches, I will then take that pin out, keep going down. And I'll look on the back, it's, it's all, all been pulled in, perfect. And I'll keep stitching this all the way around as I keep nestling that fabric in there. This is a great way to get a, a, a particular design that you can't maybe get somewhere else. Or if you're trying to do a lot of things that coordinate. So you could actually, um, I'm gonna show you about five other projects that you can make out of this same material and you can get all out of one quilt and you can make an entire dining room set that will, that will coordinate. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, down at this point again, I'm gonna try the pin on a, another side here just to, just to go right to the, the very edge, the very point where it's gonna crisscross. And then that will make sure that we don't fold too far. Look at that. Go in with that and lay it down. Over with the other one. Look at that. And then I'll just stitch over to it. Oh, it came out there. So I've got to make sure I go back. Get my cutter out. Let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and line this up where I see the fold right along that edge. And I'm going to fold, I'm going to make sure I push that and fold this over. I'll look on the other side, make sure I'm still getting a fold and I'll come in here and put the pin in. That's good. Let's go back onto the machine and I'll keep, I'll finish the stitching. Here's the nice thing. If you do this for your house before you do it for other people, you can make all the mistakes on yours <laughs> before you give it to someone else. All right, and we're almost back to where we started. See, this is where we started earlier. So as we get close to that, I'm not gonna go all the way to that point. I'm gonna stop about an inch or two away. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and fix that one corner that I had fall out. So I'm going to make sure that I like where it is. I will come back to my sewing machine I'll probably pin that over to make sure it really holds in. So I'm gonna go from this other side and make sure that pin really holds it where it needs to be so that I start to stitch. Come back here to my corner, put my needle down, pull my pin out as I stitch it. And I'm stitching right along the thread that I already did before. All right, so now that did suck most of it into that corner. And you could come back with just a needle and thread and give it a little more love. All right, now what I need to do is connect these two edges. You see how I have so much more fabric than I need. What I want to do is cut these two to where they're both a half an inch uh, or a quarter of an inch over where that point is in the middle. That's where my line's gonna be. So I'm gonna come here and this would be right at the point. So I'm gonna go over a quarter of an inch and cut that off. And then I'm gonna come here with this side and I'm also gonna measure a quarter inch on the other side. Hope that makes sense. And this is giving us our quarter inch seam allowance on each one. And then because this is gonna be so, we wanna connect all of those, keep all of the fabrics in. I can't just do this. I can't just sew it together this way because then you'd see frayed edges. I have to open up all four pieces without taking out the, the, the creases that I have. And then I need to fold them both back so I can put right sides together. See here, I've got to put the right sides together. So I'm going to open them both up. And you could give yourself more room. You could just have stopped, you know, three or four inches down, but I'm okay with this. I'm gonna line up the centers because that's the most important part to me. Line up the centers. And I can see because there's a fold in there. So I'm gonna put a pin down through that. And then I'm gonna sew, go to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam, because that's how much extra I gave myself, across these. So I'm gonna go to the machine. And I always like, if you're worried about what the seam allowance is gonna be, go a little smaller on your seam allowance, because you can always add another seam allowance into it. It's not gonna be easy, as easy to take one out. I don't wanna have to be taking it out. So now when I pull that pin out, 
I should be able to pull this tight and see how it's now the, it's the right size to go across there. What I will do is go in and make sure all of my fabric is going in one direction. So if you went to the iron, you could iron this all in one way, but it's just gonna make it lay flatter. And then I go back to the sewing machine and just continue the stitch. So I come over here to the machine, make sure the fabric's all where it needs to be. And if, the, if your binding is a little bit longer than the material underneath, I just sort of am stretching it. And wow, look at that. I'm just gonna come along and clip my threads because I've got some sticking out here. That looks like the end of my, yeah, that's good. I've trimmed most of the threads. I've made sure that all of my binding is stitched down all the way around and look at that. I've made a fantastic placemat out of a store-bought quilt. So uh, amazing. If I had bought four placemats, well, six placemats, it would be the same price as that quilt that I bought. So how amazing is that, that I've been able to make the same thing and I get exactly the image that I want and I can get dozens of more placemats out of that great quilt, but also I can make other things like bread baskets and uh, casserole dish covers and a lot of other stuff that we're going to show you in future episodes. So that is how to make a placemat out of a store-bought pre-quilted quilt. Unbelievable. You can make it look exactly like you want, coordinate your entire place, and hey, until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now.